Good evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News this Monday night. Grant Olson is away this week. I'm Jefferson Robbins. I hope you had a great weekend. Let's take a look at some of the top stories that we are following for you tonight. After a lot of back and forth in district court, a judge decides the noise complaint against Grace City Church can go forward, even though the city's original citation had technical flaws. The sudden storm that sparked the Baird Springs fire has now led to an emergency declaration to help clean up major highways that were flooded or scorched by the severe weather. A bit of clouds hemming in the Wenatchee Valley today with some rain in the upper valley. Dan Kuntz of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley fame will be wandering in front of the camera later on in this half hour to bring you your full forecast. In our top story tonight, fire investigators say a sizable outdoor fire next to a North Miller Street electrical supply company may have been arson, and they're offering a $10,000 reward for information. The Wenatchee, fi Wenatchee Valley Fire Department says the fire was reported about 1.30 a.m. Saturday after witnesses saw smoke and flames rising in the 1400 block of North Miller. The source turned out to be a pile of packing debris and wooden pallets burning against the outside wall of the North Coast Electric Warehouse. There was no damage to the interior of the warehouse, but investigators deemed the fire suspicious and say a reward of up to $10,000 for credible information is offered. No suspects were located in the vicinity when Wenatchee police searched the area. The city of Wenatchee's nuisance case against Grace City Church remains alive after a judge's decision on Friday. The Sunny Slope Evangelical Church had sought to throw out a citation that charged it last year with violating the city's noise ordinance with loud and repeated outdoor gatherings. Judge John Volan signed a written ruling on Friday that said technical problems with the noise citation did not disqualify the case. He's, dis he's allowing city attorneys to submit an amended citation and will schedule a hearing on the case for a future date. If the violation is upheld, it could cost the church more than $500. A nonprofit thrift store is in business jeopardy while its operator remains in jail for assault. Veterans Warehouse in the 1200 block of North Wenatchee Avenue is shut down after its state permit was revoked over a year's worth of unpaid business taxes. Its sister store in Kennewick shut down last year over unpaid rent. Thad Lawson, the operator of both stores, is in Chelan County Jail until mid-August after he was convicted of assaulting a woman who visited the Wenatchee location. The state attorney general's office is also suing Lawson's nonprofit foundation that oversees the store citing an alleged pattern of assault and harassment against female customers and employees. Well, if you know of any employers, organizations, or individuals who have made the difference in lives of folks with disabilities, you have a chance to recognize them for their achievements. This year, the Governor's Employers Award will be held in Wenatchee for the first time on October 6th. The awards, hosted by the Governor's Committee on Disability Issues and Employment, recognizes those who's dem who have demonstrated efforts to recruit, hire, and advance employees with disabilities. The award categories include small, medium, and large businesses, nonprofits, public, and youth employers of the year, and two Lifetime Achievement Awards. Nomination forms are due this Friday, July 28th, and links to those can be found on our website, ncwlife.com. When we come back, the Wenatchee School District is in need of paraeducators and it's holding a set of open house events next week to recruit candidates for that job. And the Chelan County Commissioner will take on a new leadership role on the board that administrates the county's insurance. I'm Jefferson Robbins, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. It's Click It RV's lowest price guarantee sale going on now at your neighborhood Click It RV. Be a winner like me and get the Click It RV. With zero down and no payments till September, now is the time to own your dream RV. Get to Click It RV now. Are you going to be mad, bro? Get never before deep, deep discounts on trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, and motor homes. Plus the best selection, highest trading values ever, and a lifetime warranty. Nobody beats the discounts at Click It RV. I'm Richard Sherman, and we guarantee it. On Frontage Road. 
Enjoy the sounds of summer from your very own pool and spa. Blue Lagoon is now scheduling pool installations for this summer. Call today to schedule a free consultation for a custom San Juan fiberglass pool. And let the experts at Blue Lagoon handle the construction, installation, and regular maintenance. Turn your boring backyard into vacation paradise this summer with industry-leading San Juan pool. No need to go off the deep end. Relax knowing you're in great hands with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. Hi, I'm Brian Campbell, and I'd appreciate your vote for Mayor of Wenatchee. Born and raised in Wenatchee, I've experienced a lot of change over the years. Businesses have been devastated by the pandemic. People are concerned for their family's safety. Parents are concerned about their children's education and parents' rights. And people are struggling to make ends meet and find affordable housing. With my past service on our city council and 12 years of meeting attendance, over 100 years of combined community service, and over 40 years in the financial services and real estate industries, I'm uniquely qualified to provide common sense solutions to these challenges. Paid for by Brian Campbell for Mayor. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Washouts and fire damage left by the July 10th thunderstorm over north central Washington led Governor Jay Inslee today to issue an emergency proclamation. The act authorizes extra state resources to help reopen Highway 2 in Douglas County in the Moses Cooley area, which has been closed since the rainstorm due to mudslides and debris, and to replace road signs, guardrails, and other infrastructure on Highway 28 in Grant County which were damaged by the lightning-caused Baird Springs fire. The Washington State Military Department will coordinate the response by the state. Well, Chelan County Commissioner Kevin Overbay is in line to become the chair of the board that oversees insurance for 25 different county governments. The Washington County's risk pool met last week in Spokane, and Overbay says he put in his name to head up its governing board. He'll become vice chair of the risk pool, effective this October, and if re-elected to his county commission seat next year, he'll become chair of the organization from October 24 through October 2025. The risk pool provides self-insurance for all 25 counties' costs on liability, property, and cyber attack incidents. The Wenatchee School District is looking to fill open paraeducator positions for the upcoming school year. Those are instructors who are supervised by classroom teachers. Early next week, the district will be conducting interviews and assisting with employment applications at two separate hiring events. No resume is required and child care will be provided while parents are in attendance. The first event will be held on Monday, July 31st from 4.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Then again on Tuesday, August 1st from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Both events will be held at the district's central office at 235 Sunset Avenue next to Orchard Middle School. Now, raising fish at the Leavenworth National Fish Hatchery involves a lot of pipeline management, especially when you consider the hatchery and many of its water collection systems were built in the 1940s. On Wednesday, crews from the hatchery made their first 16-mile hike this year to the valve that drains water from Upper Snow Lake in the Enchantments. The valve dates back to the establishment of the hatchery and it has to be handled manually several times a year. The water released from Snow Lake flows into the Icicle River to maintain flow levels that protect salmon habitat in the hatchery area. Now coming up next, Governor Jay Inslee and fellow Democrats are drawing up legislation to force open oil companies accounting practices to look for evidence of price gouging. And Dan Kuntz will be along with a weather forecast to take you through the week. More from us just ahead on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Hibis Public Market is on the move to make parking, dining, shopping, and events an even better experience for our community. Check out the progress that has already been made towards the revitalization. The Westside Project is well on its way, but we need your help to get over the finish line. All donations are greatly appreciated and can be made online at our website or in person at the business office. We want to thank those who have already partnered with us. You are helping make the place we love a better place for our community to meet. Hi everybody, Dan Coos alongside Jesse Coble from Alpha Pioneer. My heat pump is, there's like steam coming out of it. It's making weird noises. Is this something that I need to be concerned about? No, Dan, that's normal operation. Refrigeration technology steals heat from the outside, transfers it to the inside, and it creates frost on your heat pump. The defrost cycle melts that off, which creates steam and a little bit of noise. That makes sense. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpha Pioneer. For heat and air, call Alpha Pioneer. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. 
Governor Jay Inslee made climate change his platform when he ran for president, and as governor, he's made climate action a centerpiece of new Washington law and policy, including the Climate Commitment Act. Opponents, including the oil and gas industry, say those measures are too expensive and contributing to higher fuel prices. On Thursday, Inslee and state lawmakers pushed a handful of bills that would force those corporations to open their books and reveal any evidence of price gouging at the pump. I'm proud to say Washington State has a suite of policies which are moving away from pollution and towards clean energy. But unfortunately, those policies are under attack. They're under attack by the very polluting industries that are damaging the health of our children. And we're here today to hold those polluting industries, the oil and gas industry, accountable. Now, something else is going on. The very industries that are causing this massive pollution are today gouging us in their oil and gas prices and trying to tell us that unless they continue to be able to gouge us for their prices, that they're going to go bankrupt. The uh, spokesperson for Chevron said the other day uh, about the fact that we're holding them accountable for their pollution, that it's not their job to go bankrupt. Well, I don't have a Nobel Prize in economics. I only have a Bachelor of Arts in economics for the University of Washington. But I can tell you the oil and gas industry is not going bankrupt. We want radical transparency. As we work towards a cleaner, greener economy, we want to make sure that everybody, especially those who are most burdened by pollution, are also part of that solution as well. So we have to hold everybody accountable for our actions to ensure that Washington State can meet our climate goals so that we can have a prosperous future for our kids as well. And part of that means ensuring that we have policies uh, to vet and if there are problematic behaviors, uh, have a mechanism for us to address those. Uh, we've already seen policies uh, in California. Uh, we've seen policies at the federal level doing similar things. What's interesting is that the policies in California, right when they were being implemented, California gas prices went down and the Washington states went up. Might have been a coincidence. I don't know. But at the same time, we need to have that radical transparency here in Washington state. And that's what we're going to bring for this next cycle. We have staff preparing a suite of legislation to ensure that Washingtonians are protected, to ensure that Washingtonians' rights are being heard and being met, and to ensure that as we are adjusting to this green economy, we're doing so in a thoughtful way. Happy Monday, everybody. Dan Coons filling in for Grant Olson, who's on assignment. Tour about is fair play. I mean, he did my show while I was gone, but he's taking a well-deserved week off. But I'm in charge of your weather. Well, I'm in charge of the weather forecast. Mother Nature is in charge of the weather. As you can see from our Wenatchee Heights camera, we are really, really baked out, folks. And we are in for a pretty nerve-wracking 72 hours as this cold front works its way through. And that is why we have a red flag warning. You know the recipe by now. Very low relative humidity. We're talking relative humidities right now. We're in the teens, strong winds, warm temperatures, dry grass, dry forest. It's a bad combination to have. So there is a red flag warning for almost all of eastern Washington that lasts through the rest of the day today. Wouldn't be surprised if it extends until tomorrow as a rather robust cold front is rolling through. Mother Nature's kicking on the air conditioning. Unofficial high today up at Painborn, 86 degrees. We hit 94 both Saturday and Sunday. So about four degrees cooler than normal. And you notice the days are getting a little bit shorter, about uh, 15 hours and 15 minutes of daylight now. We're losing about, an, uh, about a minute of daylight a day, and we are in a drought. Look at that. We are uh, an, an inch and, a th and three quarters, an inch and a third roughly behind where we should be for our annual rainfall. So we need the rain. Unfortunately, there's very little rain in the forecast. I wish I had better news for you. Highs tomorrow, all of them below normal. In fact, for, for some folks, downright comfortable. 83 out in the basin with Moses Lake and Afreda. Quincy also checking in at 83. We'll be at maybe a degree or two uh, cooler. Uh, Ellensburg not only is going to be much cooler, but unfortunately very windy down in Ellensburg. Lake Wenatchee quite comfortable and Leavenworth quite comfortable. OMAC always a degree or two warmer than anybody else. So what's going on right now? We're between two low pressure systems. There's one in the Idaho Panhandle and one just off the coast, and they are kind of pitching us in together, and that is why we have all of this wind. And we're going to have quite a bit of wind for the next 48 hours, basically until Wednesday. But today is going to be the windiest day of all of the days. And then another thing is going to happen. There's a big ridge of high pressure just off 
the Pacific Ocean that's just waiting to slide on in and pay us a visit. So we're going to have the respite from the really hot temperatures that we've had over the last 10 days or so. It's not going to last very long. As we get into Thursday, we're right back up close to 90 degrees and very little wind. So windy today, windy tonight, windy Thursday, Tuesday starts dying down a little bit on Tuesday night. By Wednesday afternoon, that low pressure ridge that's coming through right now will be out of here. It'll be in Montana. And then we're setting up for some very hot temperatures as another ridge of high pressure. And this is huge. One of the biggest domes we've seen in quite some time is gonna set up shop right over North Central Washington. It's gonna hang around into the weekend and into most of next week. It looks like it is after all July. So outside of the next couple of days when we have cooler than normal temperatures, we're going to cook right back up again by the time we get to Thursday, and especially this weekend. So Mother Nature has her air conditioning on for the next couple of days. 88 today, again, windy. We can see gusts at about 40 miles an hour before this day is all said and done. Windy again on Tuesday, but not quite as windy. Uh, we're going to have sustained winds about 15 miles an hour on Tuesday, but the occasional gust above 30. By Tuesday night into Wednesday, the cold front will begin to exit the area, and that will allow the warm-up to get going. 89 on Thursday, back up into the 90s we go on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Get ready for some hot temperatures, except for the next two and a half days. The big story, of course, very low relative humidity, strong winds, and warm temperatures. That is a bad mix. If any wildfire gets going, it's going to get going real quick. That's your weather forecast. Beautiful view of Lake Wenatchee there. And when we come back, more. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Baseball, the symphony, Super Oval, and graduations are all community events we're proud to bring you on the NCW Life Channel. Coverage is made possible by Apple Valley Honda, Bob's Apple Barrel Bark, Castle Rock International Real Estate, Confluence Health, JDSA Law, Mary Maids, Mini Blinds, and more. Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. Together for Youth, Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center, and Walkabout Grill. A reflection of and spotlight on the communities we call home. The NCW Life Channel. The Mariners took two of three from Toronto over the weekend with the Blue Jays salvaging the final of the series yesterday, four to three. Fans from north of the border flocked to T-Mobile Park over the weekend, giving the series a very playoff-like atmosphere. Sunday's finale was much like the first two games with both teams trading leads in the game coming down to the final out. the bat 407 feet and it's just a fastball middle of the plate 94 miles an hour thought that Mariners were going to see some mistakes and that was a mistake and Mike Ford off the glass give them Mariners that early lead now he sends this one towards the right field corner and it's gone just enough to get it out of here and that'll tie the game I'm ready had a good idea what he was going to get as uh, that ball was away from him and he stayed on it boy oh boy and that's a real positive sign from Guerrero hitting the ball with authority to the opposite field and a fly ball to right Hernandez back on the track at the wall jumps and it's off his glove and gone Brandon Belt gets just enough of it to hit it out of here and give the Blue Jays the lead. 
Well, he homered in yesterday's game, and he comes right back and hits another homer here this afternoon to give the Jays the lead, as Dan mentioned. And uh, he got to that pitch. It was a little bit lower. It was a fastball, and Teoscar gets a glove on it, but it goes off his glove out of the ballpark for a home run. Ground ball through the right side. Cal Raleigh's on his way home. Dylan Moore pinch hit game tied RBI single to right field. And this game is even at three. This one bounced to the left side and off the glove of Crawford and into the outfield. Merrifield's on his way home and will score. Boy, these feel like playoff games, don't they? Yeah, and of course, these two teams met last year in a wild card series, and now everybody in the ballpark's on their feet. The set by Romano. And the pitch. And a fly ball to left field. Going back, Merrifield makes the catch, and the Blue Jays will win it. They hang on by the narrowest of margins here in the final game of the series. And take the finale by a score of four to three. Despite Brian Wu taking the loss to see his record fall to one and three Sunday, manager Scott Service was very impressed with the youngsters' outing and for Seattle taking two of three in that series. That was a uh, heck of a series. Uh, you know, um, every game, you know, right down to the, the final pitch, um, our guys really competed their tail off. Um, but Brian Wu was outstanding today. Um, did exactly what we needed uh, to get deep in the ball game with a, our bullpen a little bit short, but uh, awesome job. You know, was, was in control. With a great, you know, the four seam fastball, the two seamer. He got the cutter going a little bit. Um, really, really outstanding, and, and hopefully continues to to move forward. Big confidence boost for him um, pitching in that environment here at home. So, uh, you know, bullpen guys after him did a good job to give us a chance. Um, you know, not a lot of offense in the game today. The pitching was really good. Um, you're hoping that uh, we create an opportunity there late in the game, and we did. You know, we've been getting those uh, those big knocks uh, here recently, and uh, just not quite enough today. So again, awesome series. I think our guys played their tail off. Couldn't ask for anything more uh, from our group. Um, you're hoping, to, like I said, get a little bit more magic there at the end. Just didn't happen today. So uh, go out on the road trip. I think you know overall uh, the home stand. You know, started off a little rough. Uh, Love the way we're playing right now. Um, just the energy, the competitiveness that we have. Uh, knowing that we're not going to quit, we're in every game, and you know you're seeing that with the effort our guys are giving. So Cal Raleigh also helped the cause Sunday, going one for three with two runs. Seattle heads for Minnesota today and uh, facing the Twins. That game's underway on Root Sports Northwest. Other American League West action Sunday. Texas salvaged the final of its three-game series with the Dodgers, coming out on top 8-4. Former Mariner Brad Miller led the Rangers, going two for three with two runs. Houston took two of three from Oakland, including Sunday's 3-1 victory. Yanir Diaz and Mauricio Dubon each homered for the Astros. Andrew Velasquez and Luis Rengifo each homered for the Angels in a four-run fifth inning as L.A. beat Pittsburgh 7-5. Los Angeles was also winning two of three over the weekend. So Texas's lead over Houston is three games in the American League West. The Angels remain eight games back, while Seattle is eight and a, ga eight and a half games, that is, out of first place, heading to Minnesota. Wodachi scored in double digits for the second straight day Sunday in completing a three-game sweep of Nanaimo. 11-7 the final. Wodachi jumped out to an early lead, scoring two runs in the first inning. They added crooked numbers in the fifth, seventh, and eighth before it was all said and done. We get more on the weekend sweep from the voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman. The Wenatchee Apple Sox earned their seventh sweep of the 2023 season as they took all three games against the Nanaimo Night Owls this past weekend at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Josh Williams drove in three runs, including hitting his fifth home run of the season on Friday. And then on Saturday, Wenatchee trailed by a 5-1 score after an inning and a half, but rallied back to pick up that win, including breaking a 5-5 tie with a five-run bottom of the fifth inning. On Sunday, Wenatchee never trailed, but in the middle innings, it got a little bit interesting a couple of times, but Nick Putnam led the way with a three-for-four effort as he drove in two runs. Frankie Carney also drove in a pair and scored twice as the Apple Sox stretched their winning streak to a season-best matching six, while also tying a franchise record 
with their 11th consecutive home victory in West Coast League action. Wenatchee has not lost at home in the month of July and looks to continue that as they host the Bellingham Bells on Tuesday night after an off day at 6.35 p.m. on a $2 off Tuesday. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Quincy Vassar got the start Sunday, but it was Trey Huff working an inning and two-thirds of relief to earn his first save of the summer. As Joel mentioned, Wenatchee's back at it with the first of three games against Bellingham tomorrow night at 635 at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Another West Coast League play Sunday, the series finale between Bellingham and Kamloops was scrubbed due to poor air quality in the Kamloops area. Yeah, they got fires up in the Canadian uh, Rockies. The Bells had taken the first two games of that series prior to Sunday's cancellation. Reed Hensley struck out nine hitters over six and two-thirds innings as he and a reliever held Port Angeles to one run on three hits. Kelowna's 5-1 victory. The Falcons swept all three games from the lefties. Edmonton's Dallin Harrison pitched a complete game, three-hit shutout as the North Paws beat Cowlett 6-0. Tommy Takahoshi was 2-5 for five for Edmonton with two runs and an RBI. Levi Jones' RBI single broke a 3-3 tie in the top of the seventh and later scored on Ty Yukimoto's RBI double and Corvallis hung on to beat Walla Walla 5-4. Portland scored five times in its final three at-bats to come from behind to beat Ben 5-2. And a non-league play Sunday, Victoria beat Coquitlam 5-3 while Ridgefield down the Northwest Star Academy 12-8. Well, Wenatchee emerges from the weekend with a two-game lead on Victoria in the West Coast League's North Division standings for the second half. Kelowna climbed into a second-place tie with the Harbor Cats. Bellingham comes into Wenatchee tomorrow Five and a half games behind the Apple Sox at six and eight in the second half. Now the Bells already punched their ticket to the postseason with the first half title. And just a reminder that we'll have uh, ballpark action tomorrow here with the uh, first of two broadcasts this week as the Apple Sox host the Bells in a crucial series. I'll be joined by Brandon Schmitten with a call here on the NCAA Live Channel, our pregame tomorrow night at 6.30. Let's look at sports news. Have a happy Monday. I'm back from vacation. Thanks to Grant Olson for filling in for me. Now things flip-flop. Grant's on vacation this week, which means I'm going to be doing the weather for the evening news tonight. That'll be fun. And uh, everything gets back to normal now, even though it's vacation time. Grant's taking some time off, and he's well-deserved, I might add. But I'll be back in the swing of things by Tuesday. You know what it's like when you take some time off. You get back to work. you got to catch up on your emails, and you got to catch up on whatever it is you may have missed over the course of the week. I'll be doing that tomorrow. Tune in on a Tuesday edition of Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It can't be any worse than today's. And that's our newscast for this Monday evening. Thanks for sticking with us. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or on our website, ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we would like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call, 888-6295 at 888-888. NCWL. I'm Jefferson Robbins. Good night.